Hey, welcome back to AZ Off Grid. We're in December 2017. Um, we just got up here last night. I haven't been up here in a long time. I was really, really missing this place. Um, <clears throat> it's actually only, what is it, 38 degrees right now? It's kind of weird. And obviously, as you can see, there's no snow on the ground. <laughs> uh, it hasn't rained. There's like a drought going on up here. This is very unusual. Um, it hasn't rained, I think, up here in probably about three months. And that's like unheard of. So I don't know what's going on out here. Everything is extremely dry. I'd be lucky if any of my trees are still alive. It's very overcast today. It's supposed to be clear, though. Um, sun's trying to burn through right there. It'll be out here probably in about an hour. All this stuff will be gone. Uh, brought up Sadie. She loves this place. Let's go see if my tree's still alive. I haven't watered it in over a month and a half. Look at that. Still alive. That's awesome. That is awesome. And you know what? It's, I think it's got it because of this uh, red mulch here. Doesn't matter what color the mulch is, any kind of mulch. Um, that's a lifesaver, that stuff is. Um, that stuff will help hold the moisture in the dirt for a very long time. Um, and keep the, the roots and the area in the roots below it uh, moist for much longer. Not only that, but I think Douglas firs and ponderosa pines are drought tolerant trees. And once their roots get set, and uh, start to take off in the soil the they'll do a lot better as far as survivability this one looks good i'm gonna have to get some water here in a little bit when it warms up <clears throat> my um one blueberry plant over there at the trailer it's still alive I haven't watered it either uh, the leaves have all turned red they look like they were dead but when i got a closer look it's they're still alive um so that's awesome um, haven't checked anything else yet. We just I just got out here, walked out for the morning, let the dog out to try to use the restroom. She hasn't used the restroom since we left home last, well, I guess yesterday afternoon. So she'd rather go sniff around and explore and stuff like that than go to the bathroom. So, um, all right, I'm going to get off here and get stuff going and I'll get back with you here in just a little bit hey guys I'm over here at my buddy's property and I'm coming down his back driveway here and a huge elk just ran right across the road in front of me he's probably gone now but he was right over here when I went by I don't want to startle him too much and piss him off because I'm definitely no match for him. I didn't realize how fast those dang things ran. Couldn't believe how fast he was. I think he's gone now. I could have caught that on camera. It was pretty neat. Huge animal the size of a horse bolting across the road. Fast, much faster than a horse. He went from zero to fast and like nothing. That's cool. This is the first time I've seen an elk over here. I see their their uh, their poop all the time, but I've never actually seen one. I see them all the time down at the bottom of the ranch, but not up here. Damn, I don't know where he went. I think he took off. I scared him. Oh, well. Better luck next time.
Those are elk right by our property, whole group of them. They're looking at us right now. He's looking at us right now. There he is right there. I've never seen that many elk over here before. With a big rack on them too. That's awesome. I think I think they're gone now. Let me uh, zoom out real quick. So me and the kids were just out riding riding bikes, and uh, they crossed right here where these these uh, big trees are. I don't know, three, four, five of them together. And uh, I just never seen that many elk over here, close to my property. That's awesome. I think they're gone. Let me check over here real quick. off they're headed right over towards my property which is that way about a half a mile <laughs> that's awesome all right guys talk to you in a little bit hey guys i just wanted to show you, show you this real quick we're about uh three miles from my property we're riding along down here on the road and look at all these uh, elk tracks they just, there's just a ton of them and they go forever. They line the road all the way. They just, they just keep going. There must be a ton of elk out here right now. That's just awesome. I've never seen this much elk activity up here before. Not up where I'm at. They're always usually down at the bottom of the ranch. That's, uh, it's pretty neat. Anyways, I just thought I'd share that with you guys real quick. Alright guys, Saturday's about coming to a close. The sun's starting to disappear. It's actually not even that late. It's like 4.45. Um, today was more of a relax and have fun and hang out kind of day. I didn't really do much. Um... While we were out looking at elk on the bikes, we had an issue with the little quad over there. It, uh, it stopped running about halfway back, so I had to go go pick up my daughter. She was riding it. Um, I'll get that fixed tomorrow. I'm gonna steal some parts off of the bike here. It's all the same setup. They have the same motor, same carburetor. Just, it's missing a bolt, so it's a problem with these uh, uh, knockoff brand uh, dirt bikes and quads. Is is they uh, they rattle everything loose. If you don't check everything to make sure they're tight after every couple of rides, you you're going to lose a bolt or two. So we actually lost oh, this bolt right here, which holds the. Uh, this gasket in here between the carburetor and uh, basically the intake manifold. That's what this little pipe is here that goes to the head. We lost that bolt. The gasket fell down on one side and then it's like it's running out of gas. It's basically the symptoms that it shows when that happens. So no big deal. I'll take the bolt out of this one because I'm not going to ride this tomorrow. It's, it's not even mine. It's one of my kids. But. Um, I'll put that in the quad, it'll fire right up. My daughter can continue riding tomorrow. She doesn't really like the dirt bikes, she likes the quads. Um, <clears throat> neighbors came over for a bit. We were having, having some drinks and uh, just catching up. We haven't seen each other in probably a month and a half or so. But I went ahead and changed the oil 
and a spark plug on my little Honda generator. Uh, <laughs> I've had that generator for oh about four years and uh, no comments please but uh, I have never changed the oil in it. This thing runs like a top. Um, never changed the spark plug. I've never cleaned the air filter. Oddly enough, this thing's got I don't know how many hours run time, probably, oh, in the high hundreds, like probably six, seven, eight hundred hours, maybe. Um, I checked the air filter, it's spotless. Not even a, a grain of sand or dust in it. So that was pretty, pretty cool to see that there, I didn't have to clean it after all this time and all these years. Um, spark plug was probably midlife. I went ahead and changed it out anyways and the oil Well, you can see the oil pretty nasty nasty black sludgy So my bad for not changing the oil for four years five years But hey, that's a Honda for you. They, they just keep on going Kind of like a Glock, you know you drop it in the dirt pick it up and fire it drop it in the mud pick it up and fire it that's just that's how these things are they're, they're a great product so I can't say anything bad about these generators they run forever on a gallon of gas seven eight hours you know on a gallon super quiet and although you're supposed to maintain them frequently <laughs> uh, I haven't in several years and it still runs great so don't do what I do that's all I really did today was just change the oil and the spark plug on the generator. The rest of the time I was out riding with the kids and just uh, just enjoyed being here, you know. It's, uh, it's getting pretty chilly out here. It never really got too warm today. I think the high was probably 48 degrees or so. I don't know what, what the temperature is right now. Uh, 45 it's got a slight breeze I hope that doesn't pick up on the, the phone I did go ahead and get the little fuzzy thing that goes on top of the uh, that covers the microphone that plugs into my phone here I just didn't put it on yet it's really not that windy as you can tell by my carport it's not blowing up like a like a balloon so um, I got here last night. I think it was 8:30. My batteries were were good. They were at 13.1, and they've been rested for several hours, so that's good. They're holding a good charge. Um, that's about it for for today. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to. Hook up those last two solar panels over there on the left, on the end there. I'm going to go ahead and tie those into the rest of the system. They've been disconnected, just sitting there because I didn't have the right uh, connectors to do this. In the last video that I posted on this, I said I was going to go ahead and put a combiner box here. I lied. Those damn things are expensive, and there's really not much to them. I mean, it, it's it's kind of stupid how expensive they are. But I went ahead and got some branch connectors. I'm just going to use those instead. They pretty much serve the same purpose. The only difference is, is there's no uh, there's no circuit breaker, one or two or three circuit breakers in them, which I don't need out here right now. I don't have enough uh, amps and voltage for something like that. So I'm just going to use some branch uh, MC4 connectors, tie it in, it'll be good to go. That's about it out here. Um, it has, like I said earlier, I think I said earlier, it hasn't rained out here in like three months. It's right now, last year, at this time, last year, there was like three feet of snow out here. Um, it like broke branches, I mean it was a record breaking snow for that, that point last year. Um, and look at today, it's high of 48 or 50, no moisture, I mean, it's, it's weird, I don't understand it.
but uh, my lepopine is doing good. You can tell it's grown if you've watched my earlier videos. It's getting a bit taller. It's happy here. My Douglas fir over there towards the entrance to my camp. Again, haven't watered it and since the last time I was here, a month and a half ago, and it's looking great. So I think I think he's gonna be a survivor. His roots must have gone down far enough to reach the the moisture in the ground that, that's still hanging around. And my little blueberry bush is still alive. It's gone dormant, the leaves have turned red. But if you notice, the stalk is still green. Um, still alive, so that's awesome. Alright, I'm gonna let you guys go. It's getting a little chilly. And we're gonna start thinking about what we're gonna do for dinner. So I'll catch back up with you tomorrow morning and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, guys, take it easy. Hey guys, uh, it's about, oh, what time is it? 7.30. The temperature's down to about 32 degrees right now. Got a little campfire going on. There's no wind right now, which is awesome. Uh, me and the kids were doing a little s'mores per their request. Um, I don't think I ever showed you guys how I charge my batteries up at night. I'm sure you can hear the generator going in the background. Um, the battery bank was down to, I don't know, 12.3 when it got dark. Which is not, it's not a, a bad place to be, but it's not full. The, uh, the, cli the sky cleared up pretty good today, except for... There seemed to be this one cloud that would follow the sun. I don't know what it was. We we rarely had true sunlight shining on the solar panels today. It was always through this cloud that kept following the sun all day long. So they never really got a good charge. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how I charge up my solar panels. Or solar panels. Real good. Um, my battery bank. That night, when the battery voltage gets down a little low, and I'm gonna try not to trip over anything over here in the dark. So, hang on one second, guys. Okay, so, I got the generator going. I got this uh, extension cord plugged in right here. And what it does, is it runs up here and it connects here to the back of my generator generator to the back of my power inverter and right now it's in uh, fast charge mode and I have this uh, let's see this little this little knob right here I have it adjusted to a point that it's basically trickle charging the battery. And here's the battery voltage right here. It started out at 12.3. As soon as I kicked this thing on with the generator, it went up to like 12.5, 12.6. So it's been going for about an hour, maybe a little over an hour, hour and a half. And I just have it, this, uh, I have this knob right here adjusted so low this, this adjusts the amperage into your battery bank, how fast you want to charge your batteries. I don't want to charge them real fast because it's not good for your battery bank. So I have it turned down way low to the point that it's just slowly charging the batteries right now. And I think once it gets to 14.1, the uh, inverter automatically switches over to regular inverter mode and stops charging the batteries. So. That's how I charge the batteries at night when my battery voltage gets low. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen my earlier videos, I've got this LED light that runs off of 12 volt power, which is uh, the switch is right there. 
and it's a regular light bulb that screws into like a regular light fixture. Um, it'll go, it'll go 120 AC current or uh, um, DC. Either way, it works. It's a very low wattage. I think it's four or five watts uh, LED light. It puts off a great glow. It doesn't look like a typical too bright LED. You know. It's got a nice little glow to it. It's very bright and it uses hardly any power. Oh, so it, it produces quite a bit of light here. Um, but anyways, that's how I charge my battery bank when I'm I'm low on, on voltage and I've not had a good day of charging from the sun. I'm gonna shut that door real quick. <clears throat> Okay, let me bring you guys back over here, out of the dark. Whew. All right, so we just had some hot dogs I cooked up here on the grill. Um, my daughter just had some s'mores. My son isn't ready for s'mores yet, so he'll be out here in just a few minutes. Um, gosh, it's just perfect out here right now. 33 degrees, no wind, little campfire going on, burning up some old dried juniper that I had laying around. If you guys don't know, that stuff smells just like cedar. So I smell like I'm in a, a it smells like I'm in a cedar closet right now. That's what it smells like. Having this little fire burning. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. Here in a little bit, when we're all done with the s'mores, we're going to go inside and watch the great outdoors per the, per the request of my kids they love that movie and they want to watch it so all right so i share that with you guys real quick i'll let you go morning guys sunday it's uh 38 degrees the overnight low was 24 not too bad um it's probably about i don't know 10 o'clock right now It's funny, I, I had a drink last night out here, and then when I was finished, I chucked my ice cubes, and here they still sit on the ground. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Poor Sadie, she came out this morning to get a drink of water, and her water dish was frozen. <laughs> uh, yep, still frozen in the sun, so. Um... Real quick, while it's this time of year, I might as well uh, talk about propane and heating the trailer. And uh, <clears throat> let me uh, let me take this little plastic cover off real quick. Okay. Okay. So. My trailer came equipped with two of these, uh, I think they're a seven gallon, I can't remember, seven gallons, let's see if it'll say somewhere on here, pretty sure that's what it is, anyways, um, <clears throat> when it's cold like this out here, the, uh, you know, these trailers are not insulated very well, especially the, the uh, le less, less expensive models like this one. Uh, when you get into the much higher end trailers, $70,000, $80,000, they use a lot better insulation and they might even use a slightly thicker wall. But these walls are only like two inches thick, I think. Um, and you know, it's got some, it doesn't have the perfect seal, especially around the slide here. Um, my, all of my jacks, I think I mentioned earlier, maybe I didn't. Um, 
my jack stands that I put underneath, they, uh, they settled in the ground and they weren't making contact with any of the beams that they were supporting. So I need to crank these two underneath the slide room up a little more. I don't know if you can tell, but this thing's kind of drooping down at the, at the, on the outside of the slide. And what happens is, is it, it doesn't make a tight seal on the inside, on the inside of the, of the trailer here. I can stick my finger in there if I wanted. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you lose some, you, you get cold air coming in a little bit there. So, anyways, um, one of these tanks, well, this one in particular, I was running it the last time I was up here, a month and a half ago, a little bit for heat, mostly for, for the uh, refrigerator and the stove and the oven. And then I ran it uh, Friday night for heat, and then all night last night, and it's still running off the same tank. Um, this is a little aftermarket deal that I put on. It's a. Uh, they come with they they come with one of these, but it, this one just shows you green. It's still good. It's not empty when it when it goes to red or starts to turn to red. It's time to switch it over. <clears throat> you just turn the knob. This little arrow right here. You just turn it over to this tank. Anyways, um, I can get about oh. Probably three days of, of use out of one of these tanks when it's cold like this. Um, during the day, probably about noonish, I can shut the furnace off and it'll just stay warm in there just from the sun beating on it all day long. It'll keep it up to about 64, 63 degrees inside. <clears throat> Even though it's, you know, 35 or 40 outside. Um, but there have been times when I was up here, well, actually last December at this time. The weather was horrible. It rained and snowed the entire time. And I don't think it got over, over 28 degrees at the hottest point in the day. And we couldn't go outside really because the weather was so crappy and there's mud and snow and ice everywhere. Wasn't a whole lot I could do out here. So we pretty much stayed inside the entire time. And I think you can go about three days, two, two and a half to three days non-stop furnace use along with the refrigerator and using the stove and the oven um, on one of these tanks. Now during the <clears throat> spring and summer, I just, the only thing I use these tanks for is the refrigerator and the, uh, the oven. So one of these tanks will last like forever. I think I only had to refill one or two tanks from spring all the way till fall. Because the, the, the refrigerator is so efficient on propane. I mean, it, it will go for, if I use the refrigerator nonstop, on one of these tanks, it would probably last for three or four weeks. Um, and you know, you don't use a whole lot of gas when you're cooking on the stove, very little. So that's uh, that's kind of how we heat the trailer and, and what, what it costs and what, it, what we use to heat it and uh, how long one of these little tanks will last. So, okay, um, right now I've got the little Ranger over there warming up. I'm gonna take my daughter out uh, we're gonna find a nice stretch of dirt road out probably about six miles away from here Where it's somewhat smooth, and I'm gonna teach her how to drive She wants to learn how to drive. She's almost 15 And I think this would be a, be a pretty good Good way to start her in a standard transmission um, And then obviously it'll be much easier for her to drive an automatic <clears throat> So um, today, I'm going to go ahead and hook up those other two solar panels. I didn't get those done yesterday. And what else am I going to do while I'm out here? I might hook up two other batteries to the battery bank. They need to get charged up first. They're inside the, 
the white cargo trailer over there. They're pretty low. They haven't had a, a decent charge in probably about six months. Here and there, I charge them up a little bit when I had it hooked, the trailer hooked up to my truck, but they never got to a full charge. <clears throat> so, it's a little breezy today. I got my little microphone with the little fuzzy thing on it, so hopefully that's helping out. Um, beautiful, clear skies, no clouds today, which is awesome. It's solar power. So, all right, I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna take my daughter out, and then uh, when we come back, I'm actually gonna take my son out. He's he's 13. He's driven this before. He does all right, but he needs practice. So. All right, I'll let you guys go, and I'll uh, keep you posted later. All right, guys, it's about 5 p.m., about 43 degrees out here. It's a little breezy. I don't have the microphone hooked up. I don't, I don't know. It seems like it didn't really help uh, when I had it in. I don't even know if it's actually working, if it's even pulling sound through the microphone on the... The, the microphone that I plug in or if it's just using the phone's mic and and the aftermarket mic isn't even doing anything so I don't know it's just I know you can still hear the sound of the wind and I had that big fuzzy thing on there like it's supposed to you know muffle out the uh, wind sound so all right so what I've been doing let me go over here and shut off the generator <coughs> So what I've been doing is I took these two batteries, both six volt batteries, took them out of the white cargo trailer over there and uh, been charging them up. So you link the positive, or yeah, sorry, link the negative and the positive together that puts these batteries in series and turns these two six volt batteries into one 12 volt battery. And then I have a little battery charger there and I just plug it into the generator and then hook a prong on here and on here and just charge it up it's been charging for a couple hours um, I'm not sure what the resting voltage is I just took it off about five minutes ago so I'll wait a little bit and I'll check it with the voltmeter um, okay so I'm gonna show you what I did over here I went ahead and got these panels connected um, looks like a rat's nest of wires. It's getting kind of dark over here, but what I got was I got one of these right here, and it has four lines for power in. I have one spare because I only have three racks here, so I have enough to put another another two panels over here. And uh, connect them in here so I got one for the positive and I got uh, one for the negative here um, and it just has a it has a single line right here which you can't really tell but it ends up going around and plugging in and then looping back into my conduit and that goes underground goes over to those two and then it connects with those two and then down and into the, the battery room so um, this is gonna work for me it's it's not necessarily a professional job because I'm not a pro at this um, this is just something I've learned to do on my own so um, it's gonna work I know it's gonna work because it's been working for the past year, year and a half, I guess, year and a couple months. So I'm not gonna have any issues with it. If I keep adding more panels to my system, I'm eventually gonna have to put in a, uh, a breaker of some sort. So um, I've had the panels uh, shut off over here in the battery room. I was gonna kill the power altogether, to my trailer and then I thought 
you know, I could just, uh, I could just flip this switch right here, which this is the, uh, the line in from the panels, and it kills any power that goes to my charge controller. So I just flipped that switch, and I was able to work on the panels without any issues. But I had them off for a while, and my kids have been inside, you know, using up the electricity, so my battery's down to about 12.3, 12 12.4, 12 12.2, 12 it's kind of fluctuating. Um, and even with no, no sunlight on the panels, I might have a, a, just a hair there on the top left corner of that one. It's still, still bringing in about an amp. Well, maybe a half an amp. But tomorrow around noon will be the real test to see what kind of power I'm bringing in. Um, but I'm not going to go ahead and connect these batteries to my to my bank right now. I just don't have time. We're going to leave tomorrow. Um, so I just wanted to get them charged. They haven't been properly charged in a while. Sadie! Go Pumpers! Sadie! Silly dog. Um, but the next time I come up, I'm probably going to add those to my bank. I just, I topped off the water and they weren't really that low, just a little. So I filled them up, charged them, and uh, I'll probably throw them back on the battery chargers the next time I come up just to make sure they're fully charged before I connect them to the rest of my bank. Um, and that'll be pretty easy. I just got to make uh, two more battery cables. Um, just to, to link them into the system and then just move my my uh, positive and negative from my inverter and charge controller um, I guess I can leave the negative on one end I can leave the negatives all there and just move the positives to the new a uh, couple of new batteries so um, that's about it. What are you staring at me for? Let's go. Crazy dog. Derek, she's going to run me over. <laughs> Freaking nuts. So, I'm going to have some cleanup to do tomorrow. Get all my tools and stuff put up. And, uh, I've got to do some, uh, some taping over here some electrical tape just uh, tape off all my connections I have them oriented so that they're they're basically underneath they will be underneath the panels so they won't have any direct moisture hitting them so okay, I just have to tape up all these connections kind of like I did right here and then this whole system will be good to go and then tomorrow we'll just clean up and uh, winterize the trailer. I went ahead and put some water in the tank because we want to take some showers. Um, so I'll have to drain the system tomorrow because it is getting cold here in the night. At night it's uh, 24 degrees last night. So it's cold enough to freeze stuff and start breaking things. It's been a beautiful day. It's been clear. Not a cloud in the sky. It didn't get very warm though. I think the, the high was 45. Took both the kids out. Had them drive. Started doing pretty good. It scared me at first. Uh, first mile or two. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was interesting, but you know, like anything else, they, they started getting the hang of it. And uh, started uh, doing it without thinking about it and you know practice makes perfect so I'm also gonna water some of my trees over here tomorrow before I leave and uh, 
that'll be it for this trip. I'm not sure when I'll come back. Um, we're gonna have some downtime. So my wife's getting surgery here in a couple days. So I may go into that later on. Um, we'll see. It's related to my video that I posted titled Bad News. So we'll see if I go into that later on. It, it all depends on how my wife feels about it, but um, I wouldn't have any problem talking about it. So, all right, I'm going to get off here and I'll probably give you guys an update tomorrow morning to show you what I, what I did to, to kind of button everything up here. So I may go on a, a walk right now. Take my son out and go for a mile or two before it gets completely dark. All right, guys, I'll see you in the morning. Sunday night, about 7:53 p.m. It's about 35 degrees out right now. A bit of a breeze going on. Um, we're cooking some burgers. Kind of got a little late start on the burgers, but I mean, you can't really see them here, but. They're cooking away. Um, just a little bit ago, my son asked me, he said, Dad, when are we going home? And I thought, damn, he wants to go home already. So I said, well, we're going home tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, whatever. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. He said, oh, man. I said, what? What's, what's wrong? He said, I wish we could stay longer. I wanted to stay in the day or two. And I felt pretty good about that, you know. My son, he likes to be up here. Um, he's kind of like me in that in that sense. And my other son is the same way. Um, my older son, he likes to be up here as well. My daughter, you know, the first few times I brought her up here when she was a little bit younger, when we first got the property, she couldn't stand to be up here. I mean, it was it was always complaints and when can we go home? I'm tired of being on board, you know. And this whole trip, she's been up here. She hasn't been up here in, in almost a year. And the last time we brought her up here, it was almost kicking and screaming. But this time, this trip, she has not complained once. She's been very cool. She's not complained about being here. She's not asked when we we're, when we're going home. Um, she's fairly content. She, I did ask her. I said, "How you, how you doing here? You know, what do you think about the place now that you're a little bit older?" And she did say she was a little bored. Um, at times, she's she gets bored. You know, but you know, sometimes you got you got to let them know. Hey, you can do this. You can do that while you're here. You can, you know, whatever. You can go on hikes, and we can play ball. We can set up the volleyball net. I am going to get a uh, set of horseshoe uh, horseshoes up here. I'm going to set up a little pit. We're going to have a little game of horseshoes going on up here. So something else to help entertain the young ones because you know it's like their attention span is about two centimeters long, and you got to keep them busy or else they get bored. So. I don't know, I wasn't like that when I was a kid. I grew up in the sticks, kind of like out here, uh, close to Yosemite National Park. Um, my nearest friend, which was our nearest neighbor, was, uh, I don't know, three quarters of a mile away. So, kind of like here, hardly anybody around. I kind of had to, you know, keep myself busy, make, make do with what I had and what I, what I ended up doing was I, I started building a bunch of tree houses on the property with whatever scrap wood I could find. And that kept me pretty busy. I had a pretty extensive uh, network of tree houses going on when I was a kid. But I kept myself busy. I, for the most part, stayed out of trouble. Um, and I did get bored, but uh, for the most part, I was able to, to find something to do even though I was out in the middle of nowhere. So I think if I had my kids up here for a longer period of time, they would kind of fall into that that line of, you know, finding 
find something to do uh, you know uh, keeping themselves busy without getting too bored and being creative but they only get to come out here for a couple days at a time every month or two so but my boys love it out here my daughter I think it's growing on her and I think as she gets a little bit older she's gonna she's gonna see the beauty in this place um, and I'm sure it probably helps now that we have our cell phone signal booster and she can use her phone to you know go online and chat with her friends and watch her little videos that she has on Netflix and YouTube so I'm sure that's a big part of her uh, being more content now that she's here but um, yeah I'm just totally stoked it's it's uh, it's getting really cold out here um, I ended up taking myself and the dog for a long walk as it was uh, the sun was going down we walked uh, I took the truck yesterday the, the Ranger out and we uh, I set reset the odometer here and we drove out down the road a mile and I I, uh, there's a log on the ground on the road there on the side of the road and it actually ended up being exactly one mile on my odometer so um, we uh, not we I guess we me and my dog I asked my boys my boy and my girl if they wanted to go for a walk and they said no so me and the dog went out and we walked out to that log and beyond so we walked about a mile and a quarter and then turned around and came back so about two and a half miles and I had to use a, a headlamp on the way back because it got dark but it was a good walk it was it was nice it was nice to go on that walk and uh, the dog's tired now she's laying down inside <laughs> trying to recover this is the longest walk she's ever been on believe it or not she spends most of her time in a small backyard. In fact, she's scratching at the door now. She wants to come outside. Come on. You want to come outside? Yep, yeah, she wants to come outside. All right, so. <clears throat> There's been this uh, pretty bad chest cold going around where I live. And of course I caught it. I seem to get sick every year at this time if you watch my earlier videos from last year you'll see that I was sick as well right around the same time I think it was in January I had this it's almost it's got to be the same virus I mean same symptoms and everything you get a lot of fluid build up in your lungs and you can't breathe and you gotta cough all this crap out anyways I've had it for about a few weeks now probably three and a half weeks and it's just now about gone but the air up here is so clean and it's refreshing to breathe in. It's nothing like the air down in the valley where I live. It's just awesome being up here. Where are you going, baby? Where are you going? What? She doesn't know what she wants. <laughs> Silly dog. She's been really good while she's here. Um, I was actually surprised along our two and a half mile walk we didn't run into any kind of critters. Because she would have found them and she would have taken off after them, but she didn't. So, lucky for that. I'm glad we didn't run into a mountain lion because that would have been a problem. I was packing, but it's hard to shoot at something in the dark when it's coming at you. So, um,. All right, I'm gonna get off here and tend to my burgers because they're probably getting burnt now. And I'll, I'll get back with you guys in the morning. Take care. Hey guys, it's Monday afternoon, about 2.30. We're just heading out. Um, I'm actually about, I don't know, half a mile away from my property. What do you know, some more elk tracks. Um, Today all I did was I, uh, I went out throughout my entire property walk and uh, planted a bunch of, or planted, I just threw a bunch of seeds out 
all over the place, uh, pine tree seeds. So, um, in one of my earlier, not earlier videos, I think my last video or the one before it, I was talking about these pinion pine trees that would sprout up next to junipers. And here's a pretty large one right here. It's growing right up through the juniper tree. Um, same thing over here. Here's a, here's a smaller one right beside it. Another one here. And then, of course, another one sprouting up right next to this juniper. So, it's got to be the birds that are bringing the seeds over from from uh, the Grand Canyon and just dropping them. These, uh, these pinion pine trees are kind of all over out here and they're always sprouting up uh, underneath one of these trees. So um, as far as the solar power, I didn't have enough time to really tape up all of my connections. Um, I just, I did put some tape on them but I pulled them up out of the way underneath the panels so uh, they wouldn't get any moisture on the connectors. So that's about it. We've cleaned up and we're heading out. So that's going to do it for this trip. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.